um, just ignore ignore the re the record. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, thank you to everyone. I'm just going to start reading. Um, this, this is a working uh, manuscript. Um, it's called Ogudlila, Crying in My Mother's Tongue um, by Kadi. I am hoping to have it published soon and I'm asking for prayers. Um, so just to give a little context, um, it's... Um, it's there, the context. Crying in my mother's tongue, Gugudila is an explorative collection of poems and prose born out of my master's thesis, born out of our losses as individuals and as a nation. The original thesis was an exploration of loss, how we express loss as a multilingual new generation of youth, as women, as girls living in an unequal South Africa today. The research part of my thesis sought to explore and offer the different forms um, the writing forms and styles that are available for bilingual writers and for us as women, children, youth on our journeys of healing. I believe that we do not have to be scholarly writers um, to write and explore our loss in a way that can touch another. There are indeed various styles and tools available in creative writing that can help us more easily face our realities and past and perhaps help us to heal. This thesis was a collection of poems and prose that explores the disjunction of loss for women and children across the two languages I inhabit, Isukosa and English, as much as I am a Sosotu woman. The collection primarily focuses on loss that follows the experiences of gender-based violence, the loss of Itemba, hope, Ukutukela Yungondo, mental um, health, Ukolo, trust, identity, Ubuena, your body, Umzimba, and love Utan. For me, Isukosa captures the innate musicality and deep emotions within a word or a sound that are not available in English. On the other hand, English readily produces visceral images that are difficult for me to process in Isukosa. I also wish to announce that the following poems may trigger some people. Um, and secondly, for the Tosa poems I have translated, I will only read the Isitosa poem and the English poem will be on the screen for the sake of time. Okay. I'm so nervous. <laughs> okay. Uluimi, a tongue. Uluimi, a language. Uluimi, a lie. I have had many tongues in my mouth, many tongues dying in my mouth, many tongues growing in my mouth except my own. Daughter, of no place, of every land. This is a story of stolen innocence, of hidden love born out of tragedy. Moving between time, between worlds, reaching for her mother. Dying and being born on the edge of freedom. This is a story of a girl, and I loved her. I loved her. 1988, the pregnant tree in our village. There is an empty house built upon the birth of queen. Mamrena, they called her. She birthed six kings. One died on her bed, nine months old. And where he died, a pregnant tree pushed out right from the center of her back. Hunched like this, she walked, a tall Sesotho creature, Mamre, covered in yellow snake skin with a towering brown tree on her back. Since her mate disappeared into the ground, they say the men in her village dared not look into her blue eyes. They all heard of the one who drowned in her, but I did. I grew up going into her, never wanting to come out. Nine four, dear Kamata, why did you give Dada small hands? Dear Kamata, Dada's hands are too small to hold Mama, so he slices her up to try and make her fit. He cannot have Mfazi bigger than him living. He cannot have Mfazi bigger than him living in his house. Every night, Dada dilutes his blood from Kamawabelung, 
It tastes better than his own, trying to quieten the dead ones living inside him. But the smell of death will not leave his bones, and her scent makes him stink in his own home. Mama's bones cry to try Pututada to sleep. Only her blood dripping lulls him. I am not allowed to swim in Mama's blood anymore, but I am allowed to watch her clean it up. I am allowed to help her pull him up too. I'm also allowed to wash if I get after she offers her blood to the soil. The moon and I became friends as the only, as the only witnesses of how mama plays dead then trades her blood for more time. Me dying. I would like to give a trigger warning for this. Shh, he says. His green tongue licks the cold of my face. You fucking make a sound and this knife will fuck you before I do. I do as he says, not because of the knife walking my throat. My daughter is sleeping in her bedroom, less than six steps. I can hear her breathing. I plead silently, God, deafen this monster so he doesn't hear my girl. I hear her, her chest moving up and down, my eyes shut, her breath dancing in and out. I focus on this, I focus on her. For a moment, I can forget the face on top of me. For a moment, I'm not in this moment. He licks my eyes open and he whispers. God is quiet. The man is pushing me into my bed. I don't fight him, I cannot fight him. My daughter, I want to sink. I want to drown, but the mattress is fighting him. A small cry slips out. I have been crying for a while. Saliva down my mouth. This is real. He is real. This is fear. I want to fight back, but my daughter's face tells me not to. She is inside my eyes. He bends. His heavy, long upper body over my small frame. He comes back up with a red brick. My eyes open. I recognize the brick. I have a pile of bricks outside. I was going to finish building the wall. It's my fault. This nightmare is my fault. How did he get inside my house without me hearing? He had to break something. Did I not lock the sliding door? No, I did. I, I did. I did. Does he have a key? Does this person know me? The brick. Why is he holding a brick above my face? Is he going to kill me? If he wants to kill me, he has a knife. Why is he not stabbing me? Why is he holding a brick above me? He answers, a kettle boiling in my ears, loud, hot. This is pain. It's dark. He comes back at me again with the brick. I'm out. I'm in. I'm out. Blood is lava in my mouth a thick oozing in between my teeth. I am choking on my blood. I can't cough, but I do a little. I will wake her up, so I swallow. Blood is running down my face. Blood is pouring. I want to cough. This is panic. He puts the brick down on the empty side of the bed. Gently, he is delicate with it. Settles it down beside me, a lover for later. I'm out. I'm in. God, please save me. The man on top of me grunting, pulls his penis out of his pants. A breathing snake falls on top of my stomach. God is quiet. He hits me with it, his penis. I want to ask him to take everything, everything I no longer care about, but I don't move. I don't speak, God is quiet. This is helplessness. He picks up the knife from beside the brick. He slides the blade down from my neck. His legs straddled across me. I didn't realize how close it was. I could have killed him, maybe. The snake is getting stronger, has been waiting on my stomach. The snake is moving on top of me. A hard snake is on top of me. The knife moves and down, up and down my ribs. I think the knife comes. I'm not sure. 
The knife smiles, tries to cut my gown. My gown fights back. God. My stupid gown makes him mad. I beg my own gown not to provoke him. Please, I'm sorry. He thinks I'm talking to him. This makes him hard on top of my stomach again. This is darkness. I am not afraid of the knife. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of waking my daughter. I am afraid she will know that I am in danger the way she knows when I need a hug. I am afraid of leaving my child in this place. I need to lie still now. This is fear. He is maggots warming his tongue inside my mouth, soiling my bed. My stink mixes with his stink. Shit and urine mix, move slowly under me, move slowly towards him. He feels it all. I am angry at myself. I know what is coming. A thousand bricks on my head, crashing bricks inside my head. I don't move. A burning ocean inside me. I don't move. This is fire. This man wants me dead. An angry brick against my head, my daughter. A brick against me. God, where are you? I am all she has. My daughter, I can hear her voice. I can hear her. What is she doing? Wake up, mama. She's not here. I'm alone. No one will save me. I'm sorry, Kuti. He smiles with his yellow teeth. I can smell the pluck and the blood and the death in his mouth. In his mouth. My eyes are crying. Crying will not save us. He stretches my legs as far apart as they will allow. I concede. He pushes inside me. Penis in my lungs. Penis in my fingertips. This is dying. Nineteen ninety-five, not nineteen fifty-five. Dear Kamata, Uzam Tata Nino Mama. I think I hear time ticking in Mama. I watch her work all day to drown it out. Her favorite place to run away from it, Yagadi Yake and me. Once I asked her, Mama, why do you love the garden so much? She said. I need to feel life growing in my hands and done now. Then one day I asked her, Mama, will I go away one day like your plants do? She stopped watering her garden, looked at me, and then she cried. She lifted me up and whispered, eh, when can I That last day we went back into the house. She made me umfino, spoiled me with a second bowl. And on that second bowl, I decided never to ask Mama questions again. And I think she decided to love me more than her garden. Amata, tell me, how much time do I have with the man? Yep, Amata, in And this is the English version. I will read the proper. Dear Amata, in Soko Yakai. Apa, Kutrita Nangomoy. Kupefu na umangu pali. Kupita na izbilini. Nenchi ziyo zimpa kazayo. Ama donga, ama donga bizlekayo. Nenye mbezi ezi chisayo. Kunakama imbuli. Kakufige utatu. Dia kwa mata. Kuko ispoho ekai. And that is the English version. Dear Kamata, Kuko is Poha Ekai. Good twice is Poha Gums in Bagamam. See pills on a mass of that. See figure, see what can get. Sabua pack, see little, see little guy is in. See what been, see what been believed. See land and that. Now I do not know the English word for gaggers. But all I know is that it's this thing that it does when it's really full, it releases a small thing out of its mouth, but like really, really slowly, 
from the side of its mouth it's like parts of what it ate like very little that you cannot even recognize you can't tell you mostly just see the saliva holding chewed up pieces of what it ate whatever it is that comes out of its mouth is not what it took in anymore 1997 dear kamata i need to pray with my kulu now there's too much moving around in this house. Bags being packed and unpacked. Broken glass on the floor, then in mama's hands. Loud screaming in my ears, then whispering women in my sleep. And no praying. The other day I got dropped off at my kulus and very few days later I got taken away from her. I didn't want to leave her, but no one ever asks me what I want. And Dada says children must keep quiet when big people talk. So I keep quiet all the time. But I try this thing where I tell them with my eyes. Sometimes I see them look and all the time I see them hear, but they say nothing. I didn't mind playing with my friends at school, at Makulu school. Makulu school at home was so much better. She said at hers, when I open my eyes, we start. I didn't mind being cold once a day, watching water cook on a fire that she made so I could bath. I didn't mind eating only a stool to every day for breakfast than chasing a chicken that scared me for dinner. I didn't mind watching other children play whilst they waited for me, whilst they waited for me to finish making bread with my fists. I didn't mind having to sit on the floor and wait my turn in the circle with one plate and seven other children to eat lunch with my fingers. I didn't mind climbing her trees to look for ripe peaches and hiding in my mouth the green ones. I didn't mind filling her bucket with apricots then walking all then walking all alone to her neighbor to trade them for millies. I didn't mind being sent up the hill twice a day for a stony and being chased down the hill by a brown dog so I couldn't steal any of it all the way home. I didn't mind falling and cutting my knee open and my kulu blowing the blood back into me, then telling me to go play the pain away. I didn't mind washing in a little red vascoom where I couldn't stretch my legs but had to make sure I washed, it. I washed away all of the day and all the night before I went into new ones. I didn't mind singing over words that I couldn't understand every night for an hour from a hymn book written in my mother's language to earn my sleep. I didn't mind falling asleep, listening to her pray for me and my teachers and my mama and my sissy and my mama's sister and all her children and her children's children and my dada and my dada's mother and her children and her mama and her dada and their mothers and their fathers and her church and her friends and her neighbors and her mama Zala and her sisters from her mama Zala and her brothers and for her husband and everyone with him to take all her prayers to you, Kamata. Kamata, I need to pray with Makulu now. Dear Kamata, my parents hid the way home. Mama and Dada packed my toys without me, and I didn't have many, but I didn't even say goodbye to my friends. I arrived to a new house with more walls, a bigger garden, and many quiet houses around us, all made of loud bricks and soundproof roofs. I should like this home. There are more rooms for Mama to hide here. There are more rooms for Mama to hide. But here, the children aren't allowed to play on the streets. I think it's so that we don't talk about what happens under these soundproof roofs. At least in my old home, I knew I wasn't alone. Dear Kamata, the team is surprised to come alone. That is the English version. Nam Sanj and Dishia no Malum and Tanda. The cooler and the surprise came back as a Christmas, on a pop, nail like this. All go on the time of Malum and Wam. I'm saying to Malum and Ute, Chan, the old and the surprise sack. Dim Linde, Dim Linde, the cooler of the gamma in Nuelas and a poppy Wam. Capand, my old tool, the lamb, Lea Layos, Lea Layos, a fish. They were uncanny and my cutting. I'm a tongue, I am a mother. Uma lumia one hand, so sugar, my papa. When you sit down, the shush, 
Undi chisa nga pakat. Undi chisil. Nga pakat. Ako mtozo ibuwa. Temkele lumam. Nineteen ninety eight. Dear Gamata, is silo a petty. Sitreta umama elel, in younger each on gil. Sindukulango bunon, a metal am as a mel. Sisabeza eho rentlebin. Sindukota simonis. Dear Puma gulum zim, Sisanambit. Tibuga, sitrebin. Two thousand and five. Dear Kamata, what happens to girls in forests? I never met anyone as brave. She used to bask in the center of the sun. I used to run from its rays. One day I asked Mama, Mama, what happened to Noctula? Mama said, She went through a forest in our village of Danam and never came back the same. 2007, dear Amata, today I kiss the sun goodbye. Steel bed, yellow sheets, thin skin, yellow fingertips, dry lips, and a big heart, hungry for one last kiss. Thank you, Amata, for letting me kiss Noctula one last time. Dear Noctula, do you remember how you called me, Sissy, but I was only one year ahead of you? You said I moved in the world like I'd been here before. I felt the same about you. I spent 150 days counting down to see your face every single year. We would hold each other like each visit was the last every single year. You taught me how to make ice cream with sugar, amandzi, and to me sorry your order network it is we didn't know how to jump over ton to me sorry we didn't get yes the, the last stanza from dieno kutula bamba ninyan uh your network was breaking the last stanza yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Nanda. Okay, just interrupt me at any moment if I break up again, please. You taught me how to make ice cream with sherbet, amanzi, and a stolen plastic from Akulu's kitchen cabinet. You taught me all the games that black girls should know in order to survive in this place. You taught me how to jump over torn pantyhose, click your fingers and find that you've landed on the other side. How to listen, really listen to not do much those tales of her parents and for some time forget all about my own. No one teaches, no one teaches me anything anymore. The truth disappeared with you. 2009, Amashad. Mama never talked to me about the forest, of how nobody should enter it when it is dry, of how I was allowed to go into it alone. The women in my family never spoke about the forest, nor did their mothers before them. They all tiptoed around it. They called it every name but mine. It's Opi, it's Utsunzo, Ihozozo, Iguava, Ipunani, Isnene, Ipumpum, Inguza, Inkoma Yekai, Ekai Yalelal. Now that I am older, now that I am older, I understand women in my country, Banga Mashat. Just to take a break from all of that. 
Amashati Ewe Apelile La Chabalalizwe Amashati Ewe Apelile La Chabalalizwe 2009 Dear Tamata no one talks about the real devils. No one told me that the devil waits for you at varsity. Didn't tell me that evil is a handsome boy with good manners. Didn't tell me that the devil will know how to make me smile, laugh, forget. Didn't tell me that the devil would come from good parents, would believe their son over me. 2011, to remember. I was young, finally free, far away from home. I would sing all the time. It's about time to listen to Boom Shaka, even write my own songs. I dance like someone told me, today is the last time you will ever dance. I dance with my eyes closed, with my hands raised, my fingertips could almost see her. I'd been walking to her, then he came. With big white teeth and a silver smile. He fooled everyone to get me alone, me and the police on the way home, who saw that something was wrong with me, just as I had said to something wrong with me. But none of us saved me. Water, a white sofa, faded, black. I slept, he dug. He dug into me repeatedly. And what is it like to be dug into? To wake up naked and scared, alone, to feel like a spade was plunged into your stomach, your throat, your stomach repeatedly. To know that whilst you slept, someone cut you wide open, swam in your blood, drank everything inside you and left themselves inside you. To feel like every part of what is left of you doesn't belong to you to feel like gutting it out, to find Imela that won't hesitate to remove Ella Lungapua and everything tied to it, so that maybe you feel less filthy, less dirty, angry, less ashamed, stupid, less undeserving, faithless. Less. Me and you broke apart again after less ashamed. Because in many showers you take care. You're still breaking up. Because it doesn't matter. Can you just check the Wi Fi, Christopher? Is it better, Andre? Yes, that's much better. Okay. Um, to know that whilst you slept, someone cried you. To feel like every part of what is left of you doesn't belong to you. To feel like gutting it out to find Imela that won't hesitate to remove Ella Lunga Boy and everything tied to it. So that maybe you feel less filthy, less dirty, angry, less ashamed, stupid, less undeserving, faithless, less, less. Because it doesn't matter how many showers you take, he won't come out of you that way. To have umdu akukata mungsakula, to feel that umwambanje where now you are a grave, you are a void of darkness where umbomi comes to die. To feel that something that resembled umdu stole a light inside you and gave it to the devil and no one saw them but God. To know that only Kamata saw what happened to you and did nothing to save you. To know that to know that in order to prove what happened to you so that somehow you save another girl, you must have your legs opened again and be tested for the truth again. That you must stand in front of a group of men and tell them, no, convince them that you did not consent to having life dug out of you. Despite wanting to bury yourself in blankets and sheets and curtains and darkness and silence, despite the nakedness you walk in, despite the storms you've brought into your mother's heart, by just being born a girl. And now to believe that somehow you're responsible for this one, you must rise in a room full of men. 
despite the anchor of shame that you carry, an anchor you know doesn't belong to you, but it won't release you unless you cut off your legs. Despite that, you must rise. You must rise in a room full of men. Despite the loss of life that you wake up tasting every single day, you must stand, swallow, and fetch your tongue to surrender words, to defend your honor in a room full of men. And before that fight, the same mouth will wake up to swallow pills that will make you sick and for months so you can be healed. One bottle for the head. The other badge to fight infections that he carried. As if what he did inside you did not already kill you. As if you don't already believe that it's all gone, all the good in you, all the meaning of you, all the magic and life you carried walking to her to remember why you came to this place. So. buried. I cannot see the wound. Buried. I cannot see the wound or him, but they're all there inside me, living where I stopped. He made a grave of my body and my spirit hasn't moved since. As I'm reading, I just have so many stories inside me, not of my own only. Dear Kamata, I burnt another woman today. I saw someone that resembled him walking freely. My body froze and heated up, my eyes, my hands, my feet, my tongue, all afraid and burning. They ran to my car and we drove into a woman. Two thousand eleven. Dear Kamata, will you let me in if I willingly drown? Surrounded by ghosts, I saw all of my friends laughing, but they didn't see that mine was gone. I waited for them to leave, to be trained by my silence. Wait, wait. In the end, they always leave. Then I walked to the water. My legs were heavy to follow. Pull, pull. In the end, they give in. But my little sister fished me out of the pool. She took me to Umama and begged me, begged her to save me. I think she didn't know that you don't bring a black woman a child that she cannot save and expect her to stay the same. I know that I knew the weight of failing such a crime. That's why he got into his car and left town. But I always felt he really left me. Oh, mama knew the limits of her heart too. She didn't say a word. She only tried to hold me, but my breath was too heavy, so she just laid beside me. I drowned in her waters. I finally drowned. She held me with the quiet between us, and I knew that despite the weight of her own story, mine hurt her more. I saw futures die in her, and I followed. 2012. And that is the translation. Okay, I'm just trying to catch up. Amata Diacha. One day she and one day she did be my Amalas Avatai. Dingum Tombo Wakers, Elibelai. Divula Umlom, Utakumli, Tichisa, Tichisa, 
Osentelenium, on the Pikisai, non the Tandai, we are. Amata, the Bambe on perform. I want my body back. I want my feet to move, for my souls to feel the smoke and fire, die if I must to live again. I want to drink and get drunk on joy, to burst with purple laughter and not fade into the noise. But all I have done since that day is to hold my breath. Dear P, your tongue. I want you in my mouth. I want your face inside my mouth. I want to shove you down my throat to meet you with my tongue. I don't want you to speak outside of me. I want to swallow you. Imi sebe, ifleli chonge ilang. Isi ngasi mungu kono tole. Impu ndu zi chulwe okwe mbofa. Abafana belali, bati buu emva kwa amu. Isi keberesha. Inja yomoya. Isi londe sogu suku. Kutindi yunto ni kuma. Tia pi, ijezi yako. Yukumbula ukutibana kwetu. Kwa kwa ichezi yako. Wawunga le ichezi eno boya, eno mbala obu na lusaza. Iwonche suwe ngezi kwa mo eskubeni. That's all. Kumbono wento da emnyama enbe itkati ngolwe slano. Lo chezi yandu kumbuza estia skama kulu. Esa sivala eskewu. Daka wata ingwe ngwezi. Eza zindi kusela. Daku landela. Ndaya, tayo ngeena kwe yako ikati. Wena, wawuna le minyaka, endandi hile. Unu muso baki. Utati. Wawundi nyumbaza mbubu toki. Undi kutaza nga meso acho nge mna kupela. Muna, tandi no mzimba, omshe. Imilenze, ii yiko lite bunji weyo. Ama bele izi kukamu, izi vuti weyo. Mlo mepesika, e vuti weyo. Ingonde zikunyewe imi zimba imi lile zabale gizibana. Omye no omye kangela indo ea lasheka no usuko. Wandi kulu langobu nono. Mwetu so ngulani na simu. Kula vaino yako. Wandi lenga umkala. Kwa fuka inuele mpono. Walenga iku iku lesbono. Kwa futumala inkwala. Ezi nyawen. Luati ulwe miluako. Alusia ema zanzi. Nda kuma. Dema nge nyawo. Nda ngande. Tandi so yika. Ezi ndo wawuza. Ezi ndo wawuza kusipako. Wandi shanga beza nge mime. Eya yi tutu zela. Ini lede. Nange ya. Kwa kuma. Ikazi. Davusa. Wandi fundi sa ukuvuza. Ndi nga funi. Wandi funde sa ukumamba uusuko eskubeni. Dati, dago chonga na no miyango. Isanda ibumbe ichi stringe miyama. Wati kata. La chezi. Ok, just concern about time. GIP 2013, don't wake me up. You wake me up at night in your bed, sweating. I annoyed that I am pouring water. You don't know the damage you do. I am a whale swimming alone. Inside the waters, I hear a song, faint, but I know it. I swim towards the song. When I reach the faces of the song, I hear a child crying on the shore. I know it is my child. I am swimming towards the child in my belly. When I reach the shore and lift my head, you wake me up. 2014, dear Kamata, I have the sickness they will not have. 
I have the sickness that black families don't want to accept. And if they do, they don't talk about it until someone dies. They're never admitting publicly that their daughter or their son was a victim of it. And who else in the family had it? I've been stuck with it for a decade now or two. I don't remember another symptom. Not remembering your own laughter, not remembering what happened a few moments ago, not remembering your friends, not remembering to be a friend. I started with the pill some years ago. They said they could cure me. That's when I also started. That's when I also started not taking calls. They all made me feel nothing. The calls were the pills. So I thought staying away would hurt less than having to be with me. The only time I feel free, safe, is when I'm driving on the N2, fast towards the bends with no edge, to leap out of the car, but I never follow my breath. Maybe I'm not ready to abandon this body. 2014, dear God. I found it above me on a tree and I asked it, why didn't they take me when I went in? It got up, started flying away, so I followed it. But mama told the psychiatrist that we were sitting in the garden, then suddenly she got up and started laughing. Looking up at the sun, she started crying, fell to the ground, and then I lost her. The earth swallowed me, and I woke up sleeping on red soil. I rose up and followed that black bird, and it led me to Ilali, full of old women with red clay on their faces, floating. Alone in the center of that familiar place was a big black rock, and when the bird perched on it, it turned around, woke up, and she spoke to me. It told me, Aloka Shalako, Usenam Sebens Oglin Dilay, Ambopi. Dijinga Elangi. Okay, sorry, let me read from here and then show the English translation. Dijinga Elangi. Kongenzen, Divuga, and Dijinga Elangi. Elangi. As in the winners of Busso, Tibizwan Umlam, Dilandela Ingom. Etula etulwa in young. Pays was his ziba, as he pillion. As it to me, you meet a lepus at Moya work all. Inna, I'm squire if umil. In dark and a pagat is a lele. Uvagala upunga and lazio, a lizoli lay. Diba umoya, on the design. In your wasam, the anti cocella pambi, and the anti chone manzin. Tis a fuman and the devil is a long mamma, Abahambe, Abahambe Moyen, Pescom Sabo Bomb, Ingwe Vukas, the Tula Ingom and Yanga. Liputin Li Hulu, Li Gotsana Umle Umli, or Tanza who votes back up. Umoya Wanga in paper pillisa. A pull on perfum. Pamqua Messalam, in cab, a young com, a zoli lay with say, pants gold, in the lindy. Call, can say, the vuga, the chinga, a langit. The sons are some prophetic as. Uncall, a petty, Konyuka is sons. Sir Hazula Upas, Sir Proposal of Spaga Baka, Sir Bumba Ekala Lenguez, Sessa Ogon Gossazan, and Ring, as it tobay, Wingo says in Dal, Sir Tool, Sir Bugel, the sons are some prophetic as Sir Figas with Wallace or Inconguez, and Long and Wendon, dear King, Echo Sen, Desala in Dombazan. Yeah. Dear little me, can we cry now? I have done so much to you despite everything you have been through. I don't know why I hurt you too. 
I abandoned you when you needed the big you. And most importantly, I never said sorry. But I'm here now asking you to let me in. The bad men are all gone. My promise is all over. But I can't promise we won't greet new turns and twists. I can't promise we won't fall to rise again. I haven't figured out how God works yet, but I know she's love. So it's just me, you, I love. So dear little me, can you heal? Can I heal with you? I will start by saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for not trusting you when you had a bad feeling. I'm sorry for telling you that you were too small to know, to do, to fight. I'm sorry for packing up all your dreams along with the last teddy that died about you. I miss Panky Brewster too. I'm sorry for telling you not to cry so they wouldn't see because I thought they wouldn't believe us. So dear little me, can you forgive me? I need you now more than ever. I always have, but now I have a little daughter that really needs me, all of me. So I need you and I promise I will never hide you again. So dear little me, can you trust me? I will start by crying with you. I won't tell you to stop even when the sun comes out. I won't tell you how our healing should look like or sound like. I can't tell you what shape it, what shape it should take or where it will lead us. Suzokule. Okay, I'm gonna read a final poem. And this worm um, is for Edward. Return to Zolobeng, 2021. Two cubs in my hands, one with open eyes, the other asleep. I'm placing them in my mother's palms, tougher than mine to shield them. I'm going to the mountains for a while where two old women wait for me, outside a green hut guarded by brown horses, at the top of a hidden mountain, overlooking an old river full of queens and secrets. The two old women will only watch me as I build. With hands covered in manure to cast walls to find me, I will sleep only to visit the elders, but I will wake with the ones that do not speak to save my children from a life without rivers and mountains and horses and quiet and land and snow and a mother. I will wake each day despite the urge to stay on the other side, to build a home in Zolobeng. So I teach my children what is in the name. So a life of color is not that of complexion. So a life of wealth is not that of the tangibles. So that each click that comes out of my mouth has a root with a home that they can call their own. I have been missing for a while now, long before this trip. Sometimes a mother needs to return home to be a mother because sometimes this place can make you forget how to be a human, how to feed a child and be nowhere else how to look at a child with open eyes, which turns you took that cut wires in you because you are on an edge and the mind is screaming and they are screaming and the world is screaming. And if you say one more word or take one more wrong turn, whatever colorful string is holding your body together with your soul will unravel. I am going back to Tzolo Beng, back to my ancestors land where truth and sanity wait. And whispers. Thank you. Thank you so much to me. Can we all unmute ourselves and give to me a big round of applause? Zoom meeting. Zoom cloud meeting. It's a mess of menu. To me, thank you so very, very much for coming, for sharing your words with us. Um, there was a lot of pain in there and just thank you from the yeah. bottom of my heart thank you so much and this is not my first encounter with your work this is like a I second can't. third fourth encounter with your work so to hear it read is such a different experience from reading it like it gave me some resonances to um what's um dang 
um, Lady in Red, what's the playwright? Um, I forgot, American playwright, but it gave me, it, it had, especially the long poems had those resonances. I will remember the name and I will say what the name was. Um, so everybody, the floor is open for any questions and any comments that you might have to for Dumi. Um, there are some comments in the chat from Ian, from Ralph and Jeff. But if anybody wants to ask a question, um, you're welcome to do so. Um, yeah. <laughs> are there any questions? Okay. So I think everybody's just been blown away. <laughs> everybody's just blown away. So Ian says, this is so powerful, such deep longing and so much hurt and pain in what you've expressed and what you've done with, uh, and you've done so with incredible skill, with great respect and admiration. Um, then Ralph says, thanks to me, great poetry. Jeff, really powerful in both languages. Winnie says, brilliant work. Portia, that was beautiful. Betty, very rich with experience and filled with hope and healing. Nobusi says, your words are healing. Thank you for sharing. Esther, so Esther says, so honored to have heard you live. Your words are your story. So with those very great comments, I will ask a question just to open it up for everybody. <laughs> so is there... I don't think I've ever, we've ever spoken about this. We've just sort of, okay. But is there a reason why, so I think you've kind of hinted at the reason why you use Tosa in English. Is there a preference for one or the other? Or do, like when you decide to write in, let's say it's a Tosa, because maybe let's say English is predominant. It's the predominant language in which people write in in South Africa and you choose to write in it's a Tosa. Some things you could have written in English had you wanted to. So is there any particular reason why you choose some things to write only in it's a Tosa? Uh, Nandre, very naughty of you. Um, uh, that's part of my research, you know, um, as bilingual writers, why do we write certain things in one language and we write others in another? Um, I'll answer in, in terms of poetry, um, just so not in terms of language. So because I inhabit two languages or two languages inhab inhabit me, I think you feel the same way or um, I don't know, maybe you do. The poem comes, it just comes and it will come in Tosa, it will come in English and I'll write it however it comes. I don't yet know why it comes in Tosa or English. Um, then when I'm writing it, um, System has said that title bar. I've, I've just found that uh, some of the poems that I've written in Tosa have a lot to do with uh, when I was younger. So maybe I have more memories when I was younger and um, that are memories of Tosa or memories in Tosa. All right, interesting. That would lead me to questions about editing, but I will open the floor to anybody else who'd like to <laughs> ask questions. Is there anybody else in the room who'd like to ask something? Ed, please, the floor is... Before you go, Ed, I remembered when the rainbow is enough, I was referring to that. Uh, yes. Yes, all the arrangements with that. I was hearing them and I was going, oh my God. Okay, but side notes. Ed, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nandwe. Um, Tommy, I, I am totally floored, like I think most people in the room. Um, it's incredibly brave to to um, yeah to have shared this journey and to have been on this journey. Um, I, I got a lot from 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 your reading. Um, powerful, harrowing poems. Um, System and, has so thank you. You know these little icons that we use in the room don't don't really get there. Um, so I, I'm going to sort of skirt uh, the pain and, and just ask you a very easy question. Um, do you want to say more about the other projects that that you involved in uh, my story, your heritage, and and um, the anthology, 
on gender-based violence. Um, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ed, for that. Um, I, I would like to say something about both projects um, because, you know, obviously I would like people to support both projects. Um, the one is um, a multilingual anthology. It's um, at Exclusive Books and Rose Bank. And we will be um, sending out more stock to other exclusive books. It's also at Forgotis here in Port Elizabeth. And it's an anthology written by 12 amazing South African female writers. Some of them were here today, you know, to support me in all the official languages. And they're also bilingual writers. So they wrote one poem in their language, in their mother tongue, and they wrote another in English. And it just aside from what I've just done on a completely different level, it takes you through the different forms of gender-based violence in a creative way um, through stories. Um, so there'll be a poem about child molestation and there'll be a poem about date rape. Um, there's a story about you know, young girls, a young girl that starts dating a blesser um, because she wants money. Um, so I'm just pleased to support this project um, because all the sales um, go towards our work with schools where we go to schools and we teach children about gender-based violence and we give them a copy of the book. So every single sale of that book um, is going to give the child the book for free um, in a rural school or in a school in the township. We've already reached 300 children. Um, so yeah, thank you to Elaine and, um, and um, Shemaine Huebi and Hope um, and Mandishwane, like, please just go buy the book so you see everyone there. Um, and then My Heritage, uh, My Story, Your Heritage, it's a book series that I'm hoping will also be in stores by the end of this year. Um, and that I've done in partnership with the company that I work for, Kama Social Housing Institute, where we will be, we've done, so one is complete. And the other one, the other ones, we're looking to produce, you know, hundreds of books because we have um, over 135 uh, former detainees who have not had their stories told, unsung heroes. Yeah. And we would like to make an, anyone can contact me on Instagram um, from Port Elizabeth, who is a writer. We would like to work with young writers who want to help old, uh, elderly people write their stories. Thank you for this question. Please go to exclusive books and forgotties. <laughs> so in Cape Town, just to be clear, it's Rosebank in Cape Town. The exclusive books in Rosebank. In Johannesburg. In Johannesburg. Please so let us. Cape Town, yeah. I mean, like you. You don't know how difficult it is to get into retail, Nondre. Like if you know a bookstore in Cape Town. Let me know. And I'll tell you why I want to make a point of this because they don't want to publish indigenous languages. I'm so grateful that exclusive books gave us this opportunity, you know? And um, I like, like there's an amazing lady at exclusive books that really supported, supported me. Um, it's taken me years to get into exclusive books um, on my own. Um, so, you, you know, they would want you to go with all these other people, but yeah, I'm trying to push for the publication and the commercial um, sale of stories in indigenous languages in South Africa. So if you know a bookstore in Cape Town that wants to support indigenous um, writers, please let me know. Okay, will do. Okay, so just before we get to you, but Jeff, I see you. Um, there's some messages. So Pelelani says, thank you to me tonight. You spoke for many voices whose insides are rubble after shelling. James Baldwin once said, um, our pain does not isolate us. It is our bridge. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Janja says, thank you to me. Are these stories based on your personal life or are they general? So before you respond to that, I will give the floor to put Jeff and then he can ask and then you can respond to all of them at once. But Jeff, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. Um, for to me, uh, what a very honest um, voice. Um, it's it's actually 
very difficult not to connect with it. I did join late, but I got enough to um, understand exactly what it is about. What fascinates me is the uh, translation process. Um, I was looking at the English versions, obviously, because that's what was on the screen, and listening to you. Uh, my fascination about translating yourself is um, always um, trying to overcome the temptation to rewrite the poem and sticking to the original version. How do you deal with that? <laughs> you know the answer. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, George. I mean, you know the answer, it's so difficult. It just does not not happen. Like even if it's one word, you will find yourself editing one word. And I, I, I mean, sometimes I don't at all uh, because the poem is really simple, I guess, but I think 80, 90% I do. And I find that it makes the poem better because it would make me realize that actually, did I really need that sentence? Did I really need that word? So it, for me, translating my own work is actually and it helps me to edit my work. Thank you. Okay, thank you for Jess. Uh, and just the previous question that was asked, are the stories, well, I'm assuming the person was writing other poems based on your personal experience. Um, yeah, okay, so because this is a reading, um, I will answer, but uh, should this be published, uh, no one will get to ask me this, so I'll answer here. Yes, they are. Um, various uh, different experiences, and I'll say this about it, I don't know why, but um, most women that I've spoken to, you don't experience gender-based violence once. It, If it happens once, it's most likely that you experience another form. I was actually having dinner with a friend the other day and we were talking about exactly that. How, why is it if you've experienced rape, for some reason you'll find yourself in a psychologically abusive relationship. So yes, the stories are my own experiences. Um, there is one particular story that isn't, um, or two that aren't my experiences. Um, and they're not of my own family, like my immediate family, but people in my family. And so they're all related to me um, somehow. Thank you for that, Dumi. That is intensely personal. So I, I feel that that tension between responding and not responding to questions about whether is this reality or not reality. Um, and then you have a message from Asi who says, thank you Mbedi for this session. It was productive and it triggered a lot of memories from my life. Uh, and then Georgia, she says, thank you so much to me. It was wonderful to hear you read both in, is it, oh, when you read in both languages and when you read in Isiklosa to read the translation simultaneously actually feels like another deep layer of the poem as well as a translation, incredible experience. Thank you. So you have fans. Now you've made new fans. <laughs> Thank you. Because so of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for reading. And thank you everybody who's come, who's listened, who's engaged. Thank you so much. Come again. We welcome you again.